Hello and welcome to the lecture series on economics of growth and development. In the previous class, I have talked about the Sirangarajan committee and now we know that it was set up on the backdrop of the outrage or the national outrage against the planning commission's estimate of poverty, which was pegged at rupees 22 in the rural areas per day. That means people who are earning rupees 22 or spending rupees 22 per day were not considered to be poor. And on the backdrop of that, the planning commission under the government of India reconstituted or they constituted another committee which was looking into certain important aspects for example to look at the methodology or review the methodology thereafter also incorporate the central government schemes or how can the central government scheme schemes be incorporated into estimation of poverty so since we have a hang of what the uh, the committee talked about let us recap the recommendations of the Sirangarajan committee and then move towards the estimation of poverty. So you can recollect that the uh, recommendations were with respect to A methodology, B something called as the nutritional levels and C the behavioral aspect of it. So when we talked about methodology, it was the same methodology which was used by which was used by Center for Monitoring Indian Economy. This is a private entity which is looking at the households pyramid survey on consumption expenditure. So the C. Rangarajan committee borrowed the same sort of methodology and they came across uh, a way in which uh, you can recognize poor and it was said that an individual who is not being able to save was considered to be a poor individual. So this is how you can look at the methodology or this was the recommendation of the C. Rangarajan committee. Thereafter, we talked about the adequate or the minimum nutritional level that should be there and this was given from the ICMR that is Indian Council for Medical Research Data which was talking about what should be the minimum required calorie intake, what should be the minimum intake of proteins what should be the minimum intake of fats and we have seen that these numbers are different with respect to the urban areas as well as rural areas which we have covered in the previous class. In today's class on the backdrop of this let us look at what was the threshold of poverty according to the Rangarajan formula. So it was seen that person spending below 47 rupees in the urban setup or cities and a person spending below rupees 32 in a village was considered to be a poor. So this was a new way in which you can estimate poverty according to the C. Rangarajan formula and this was the poverty threshold and you can see that anyone who is earning or spending rather spending less than 32 and rupees 47 in a, uh, in, in a village as well as in a city were, were considered to be poor. So this was the poverty threshold and with this underlying threshold the poverty numbers changed drastically. They have increased at a very unprecedented rate as compared to the previous committee. So which was obviously given by Suresh Tendulkar committee. So the numbers have changed with respect to these 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 poverty thresholds and the thresholds used by the Suresh Tendulkar committee. Furthermore, there's a drastic change in the usage of reference period. So this committee recommended that there should be a mixed or a modified mixed reference period, modified mixed reference period. In, in my previous lecture, I've talked about in, in, a, in a special lecture, I've talked about something called as uniformed Ref, uh, uniform reference period and the other is called as mixed reference period. In this, in the uniform thing what is happening is I am using the same reference period that means I am recalling the consumption of the previous seven days for all the commodities. It is same for all the commodities. Thereafter we have something called as mixed reference period. That means for some commodities I am taking it as seven days, for some commodities I am taking it as 30 days and and in that fashion I have talked about the mixed reference period seen as well as in some commodities I am taking 365 days but this was with respect to mixed reference period but now what they have done is they have also modified I am talking about Rangarajan committee they have modified this mixed reference period itself and they call it 
a modified mixed reference period and let us look at what the modified reference period looks like for different commodities or basket of commodities so whenever i'm talking about modified mixed reference for different items let us look at what is there in the 365 day threshold or, or 365 day recall period and in the 365 day recall period i have clothing i have footwear i have education i have institutional medical care as well as durable goods so this is taken into account when when i am looking at the recall period of 365 days so mixed modified mixed reference period sort of an example how they have modified it and they have incorporated only these many commodities when they recall the consumption of past 365 days furthermore in the 7 day period they have incorporated edible oils egg fish and meat then have vegetables fruits spices beverages refreshments then we have processed foods pan tobacco and intoxicants so these these are these are recorded for a recall period of 7 days again a modified sort of a reference period with respect to different items and then we have a recall period of 30 days primarily for all the remaining food items as well as fuel and light furthermore some miscellaneous goods and services including non institutional medical care that is out of pocket expenses on medical uh, care and also rents and taxes so this is how the uh, modified a mixed reference period looks like if you recollect the previous committees we have talked about um, the consumption basket with respect to 7 and 30 days as well as 365 days so the consumption basket was a little narrow here it is a little broad so they have not moved away from if you look at the criticism of this they have not moved away from the consumption based poverty line so this is again a drawback of the sirangarajan committee they are still sticking towards the consumption based poverty line which the previous committees talked about that is they also use something called as the uh, mixed reference period he just modified it adding different goods in different baskets of the recall day periods so i hope this idea is pretty much clear furthermore before we end the concept of what the sirangarajan committee talked about let us talk about the points of criticism so as i told you they missed the opportunity to go beyond the consumption expenditure based poverty rates so they missed that opportunity because they again incorporated consumption based poverty and furthermore they failed to take wider multi dimensional approach or view towards poverty so these are the two failures of this committee which 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 estimated poverty and which is uh, which is pegged at or the threshold of that poverty rate or line is rupees 47 and below in a city and rupees 32 or below or rather below 32 in a village so this is how you can look at the sirangarajan committee which is again an important committee in the post independence phase of poverty estimation so i hope all these committees are pretty much clear please stay tuned thank you